Hey folks, so tonight we're gonna go ahead and make something pretty cool. Um, this is a job for an actual customer, so it's kind of exciting. We're gonna make an aluminum motor mount for a motorized skateboard. We're starting out with just a big chunk of aluminum. This is three inch by half inch by about eight inches long of stock. We're gonna go ahead and drill a couple holes right here in the top and then move it over to the milling machine and mill out the rest of it. This is just a centering bit to try and get this hole as perfectly aligned as I can get it. This is a, let's see, a six millimeter, or no, five millimeter um, drill bit. We're gonna tap that out to an M6 by one. And then this is a 1332nd, so it's a little over 10 millimeter. The head of the bolt's gonna be 10 millimeters Allen key. So we wanted it to, to sit down in this hole. So it's like a counter bore. Here it's on the mill, so this is a quarter inch end mill. I'm um, taking 50 thou step overs and eighth inch depth of cut. And it seems to be what this machine really likes. Um, I tried it with a half inch end mill and it was chattering and it was just beating itself up. So I stepped it down to a quarter inch. I was able to maintain the same step over, so I'm taking the, the material off just as quickly and it's running a lot smoother. And this is sped up about eight times, so it this part overall takes about an hour and a half to run at this point. And this is the start of a finishing pass. I think I went down 10 thou on this. And then the step over was something like point, I think two, three inch. So almost the full width of cut of the bit. But it definitely it smoothed it out a lot. There's a little bit of scalloping on the on the finished part, but but not bad. And it looks a lot nicer than those than all those machining marks. And this is starting that first pocket. So what I did was I hogged out the material with the quarter inch, and then later on you'll see it go in with the eighth inch to kind of give it the, the definition, the tighter corner radiuses that that the original part design had. And this is going to be a square portion. I think he's putting a piece of square tubing in here is my guess. So once again, just hogging off the material with the quarter inch. And then we'll go back in and try and square it off as much as we can with the eighth inch end mill. Originally I was trying with, it was a tiny little drill bit of 330 seconds, I think. Um, and I was just having so much trouble keeping the drill bit straight, keeping it um, happy. It would, it would start to load up with aluminum and, and get hot. So I finally said, eh, 16th inch radius on that on that uh, corner is going to have to be good enough. And otherwise, a square file will take it down in a matter of a few seconds anyway. And then this is that last pocket. And I think this is just more for style and uh, a little bit of weight reduction. Oh, and you can kind of see me over there off to the right. Um, one of the awesome things about CNC is while that sucker's running you can kind of keep an eye on it but you can be doing something else so here I'm prepping the next part because the guy wanted two of them and this is a center hole so this is where the shaft of the motor is going to come through Folks, so I just finished with the quarter inch flat end mill. So I roughed all this out, did a finishing pass, um, roughed these three holes out, and then came back and roughed out that center hole. So now it's the eighth inch end mill. And we're going to go ahead and do finishing passes on um, all these inside pockets and do a basically a slot cut all the way around it to cut it out. So the sketchiest thing is cutting around the outside because this has a half inch. Um, length of cut they call it so that's how high up the flutes go and this material is a half inch so you actually get to a point where the machine actually changes how it sounds you can almost hear the the end mill rubbing a little bit but it's only for one pass and it's going slow so we'll survive all right here we go so this is the finishing pass on the inside hole yeah roughly about 10 thou with a cut full depth now we're moving into the slot. He wanted a slot here so that he could um, basically run a bolt in here and 
clamp down on that square portion um, so that it could grab onto whatever is going in that square hole. So that's still the eighth inch end mill um, going back and forth. I think I'm doing 25 thou um, per, per pass and it worked really well. I think I could actually speed that up a little bit. Um, towards the end there on my last piece I was actually doing um, 16th inch depth of cuts, um, slot cuts with this. And here we are, we're squaring out the, uh, the, the square, for lack of a better, better phrase there. And the machine kind of looks funky when you speed it up right there. It's, it's, this is sped up, that's why it looks weird, but it's just hogging out those, those corners. You know, one thing I, I keep watching, I got to fix this, um, the coolant, uh, the vibrations in the machine move the, the coolant spray nozzle away. So I have to keep going by and adjusting it. I need to get it mounted to the, the Z axis so I can just set it and forget it. Alright, here see we're just hogging out some more of the, the um, I guess the pockets that are just weight saving decorative pockets. Um, basically making that a nice tight corner instead of a you know, quarter inch cut. And then going around the, the perimeter of it and um, just doing a finishing pass, cleaning everything up. Alright, this part I could probably save some time on here, but I just needed to get that little curve there on each side. And the way I drew it, it goes all the way across for each each depth. So that's what it's sped up there. It goes all the way across, and it does that four times to get down to a quarter inch. You're doing, what's the math there, sixteenth of an inch depths. So I could probably just make it do just the portion where it's actually doing work and save a couple minutes. But it worked. And then we've got a couple, four slots here we got to cut. And those are going to be the mounting holes and we slotted them so that they'd have a little bit of adjustability on forward and back. There we go. So those four slots are done. And now we are cutting the perimeter. So this is real speed right here. And it's about to speed up. There we go. So that's eight times so you don't get bored. But this part was tricky, especially right, well, you don't really see it yet, but once the cutter gets down lower, like that right there, it was real close to my clamps. So I had to, to keep really watching it with my finger on the pause button. And then clearing out the slot with the, uh, uh, the mist coolant so that it's not recutting a bunch of chips and getting bogged down. But yeah, you can see it gets deep there. Ooh, that's close. All right, so after just a quick dip in some water and just pop the outside piece off of there, this is what we end up with. So, it's pretty darn nice. I'm definitely happy with it. Um, this meets my standards, finally. I've been doing a lot of trial and error, and I finally got something that um, I feel is, is good enough. I know it's not perfect, but with what I'm working with, it's, it's as good as it's gonna get at this point. So, until I get a bigger, more rigid machine, this is, this is it. A um, couple things like right here I've got where the tool is rubbing or scuffing the surface so I've kind of got a rough surface but that's easily you know sandable or polishable so not really a big deal. Um, really other than that I think that's the only um, real downside to doing it this way. Uh, it's really nice not having to flip the part. I was trying to do that where I'd only go down halfway flip the part and uh, it was just hit and miss trying to get it to line up just right. So I finally gave up and, and realized I could plunge that eighth inch down farther as long as I keep the chips out of the way. So that's definitely the, the best way to do it. And I think it turns out pretty good.